Let's now go over the basic operations for linked lists. And many of them are simply just the same as the array uh, operations, but there will be some specific ones uh, for linked lists, such as the uh, cursor operations. So let me switch to my iPad just to explain to you uh, what features you should pay attention to for the linked list. Again, you can always go to the uh, linked list class in the iPhone Studio to look at the exhaustive list for the operation. So uh, you can make an empty linked list as opposed to make empty in the array, right? They just, they just call it make. And also you can extend. Extend simply means I want to extend by one more node in the list, right? That's easy. And also the size and value index, also indices, also start with one. So that'd be one, two, three, and four, okay? And also it's empty, it's the list empty. And also item over here, notice that item here does not take any arguments over here. For example, like for the case of array, you can say item and then two, but it's not the case for linked list because uh, the item for the linked list depends on the position of the cursor that's, cur uh, that's currently pointing to the list. I'll illustrate that to you in just a moment. And then we also got indexing over here. Indexing, you can also use a square bracket notation where you can pass the index. That's fine. That one is just, you can use the linked list as if it was uh, it's, it's an array. And then we got the cursor operation over here. The idea is very simple. So let's say we got star, fourth, and after. So these two are commands, which means they'll modify the states for the linked list. And this after here is a query, which is to inquire the states of the cursor. If when you call start, you can think about you simply start the cursor at index one, okay? That's about start. And then if you say fourth, you're simply moving the cursor from the current position to the next one, to the right by one position, right? That's simply just the fourth. That's easy to think. And also for after, you're really asking, so you can think about the last uh, the last possible position for the cursor would be at index four, okay? So now at this point, so, when the cursor is actually pointing to here, pointing to here, pointing to here, pointing to here, these four positions after will simply just be false, which means the cursor position is not yet beyond the valid indices. Okay. However, as soon as the cursor is already here, at this point over here, at this point after will actually be true. So after, when after is actually true, that means your cursor is already beyond the valid position of the linked list, in which case you shouldn't call item to really query about its uh, contents, right? That's something I would like to sh uh, mention to you, okay? So let me just go to uh, Eiffel Studio and then let's uh, build the uh, test case, which, which will be very similar, largely based on how we did it for the array. So I would like to just start by copying uh, the entire test case that we did previously for the array. So let me just uh, paste it over here. Okay, let me just go back here. And then or rather than test arrays, let's say test uh, lists. And then structure one, structure two. Okay, so now we're gonna say it's going to be a linked list of a uh, string. So linked list is also a very common data structure you can use. And then, so here rather than test arrays, it's going to be test lists. Okay, I'll put it here and test basic uh, operate uh, test basic operations of linked lists over here. Okay, we're gonna fi uh, fix other things. But before I forget, we also need to include uh, this particular new Boolean test query into uh, the execution for the test. So add Boolean test case agents test. Uh, dash, okay, we haven't compiled yet. So I'll just say test uh, lists over here, okay? So now as soon as I uh, hit compiling, we are expecting compilation errors because for example, lower and upper and also force. So these are array specific features. They don't exist on the list, so they wouldn't compile, but I'm gonna fix them, don't worry. So let me say compile. So these are all the uh, features that are not applicable to the linked lists. So that's something we're gonna fix. Okay, let me fix one by one. Let me just go back to the uh, the code over here. Let's go uh, go over them. So now in order to create an empty list, rather than make empty, we'll simply just say make. So hopefully by fixing this, you can also see the difference between using a linked list versus using an array. So size of the list. So now in this case, we don't have lower and upper anymore. So lower and upper, we should get rid of them, okay? Because uh, for linked list, you just know you just wanna know about its size and the index for the link, uh, the smallest index for the list is always one. Okay, so as one is empty, not a problem. So up to now, we are fine, okay? And then also rather than using force, we're gonna say extend, extend to the end. So we don't have to specify this particular 
index anymore. Okay. And also we're going to say extend over here, extend over here, and then we don't need this index anymore. Okay. I deliberately want to do this because I think it's much easier for this for you to see. So you don't get confused between using the two very similar data structure. So now it's when the lower is when the upper, they're not applicable anymore. So get rid of it. But the index should still be there. But visually speaking, well, the way they work should be similar to how the array works. So that's why I'm not explaining details. And notice that for the uh, uh, linked list, you can also use the indexing notation, right? You can see even though S1 is actually a linked list, I can use it as if it's an array. Okay, object comparison, the same idea. So by default, object comparison for linked list will still be uh, false by default, right? If you want to compare uh, inquiring about uh, inquiring about a membership in the list using object comparison, you have to say compare object. So the idea is just consistent. Okay, so I don't need to explain any further. Okay, so now if I want to copy from the second list, uh, what well, I want to uh, copy from the first list into a second list. So now rather than make empty, I'm gonna say make. Okay, so now I can also say over here, so we don't need to assume because the list lower index is always one. I can definitely use a from loop because I can still use the indexing notation for the linked list as if it's an array, except that I'm gonna say s2.extend over here rather than using force. Okay, hopefully you agree. And of course, the idea about i is assigned to one and also it should always increment i stay the same, okay? All is good. Okay, and then I'm gonna say as uh, we don't have lower upper over here, and also, uh, okay, so indexing is good. So let me just make sure everything compiles. Okay, let's just run it. Okay, so we still get a green bar, right, for the test lists. So there's just one more thing I would like to show you, which is about the cursor operations. So we have start, uh, after, and also fourth. So these are the new cursor operation which don't exist in the array. So I would like to add one more test over there to show you. Okay. Okay. Let me just go back to Eiffel Studio. Let me maximize it. So let me just write. Uh, okay. Make sure that in the in the intermediate point, I should say check result n. Okay. So uh, there's another way for me to run the loop. Let me just write it. So I still have a front loop here, but for the linked list, I can choose not to use any local counter. I can de I can depend on the uh, cursor position. So I can say from, uh, I can say S2, uh, let me just do, uh, how about this? I'll create just another list just to avoid confusion. Let's say we got S1, S2, and also S3, okay? And then what I want to do is over here, Let's create an empty list first, okay? Uh, because for voice safety, you always have to initialize the variable before you can use it. So create s3.make, okay, it's empty. So now we're going to copy from s1 to s3. Okay, so rather than using a loop counter over here, we are going to use the following, okay? So now let's say, so imagine that this is uh, imagine that this particular list is actually S1. So we're going to use the cursor position to say initialize that using start and then move that to the right one position by another and then until we are actually uh, beyond the list and then copy elements over. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And then you're going to see that we're actually rather than using the indexing notation, which we know is inefficient for linked list, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the item. So item, item's value depends on what the current cursor's position is. Okay, let's uh, just write a loop. So now we say from s1.start, it's a command, so start the cursor. Move the cursor to the first position. Until, so when do we exit from the loop? So s1.after, so we say exit when the cursor position is beyond the list. And always remember to avoid infinite loop. You have to move the cursor to the right one at a time uh, for each iteration. So I'm going to say s one dot fourth over here. Okay, that's very important. Just like you increment the loop counter for the array. Okay, so now what do we do in the actual iteration? Okay, so now we're going to say we're going to say s three is the uh, new array. We want to copy uh, from s one. So s three dot extend 
over here. So what about the elements? In the case of the array usage over there, you can see we simply say S1 at position I. But now we don't have the loop counter. However, we do have the cursor that has been started, uh, that has been moving uh, 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 from left to right. So now we can simply say over here, S1 dot just item. So here, okay, let's see this. Extend S3 by where S1's cursor is pointing to. Okay, that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, and now uh, I think uh, yeah, that's the last one. So now what we like to do is after this particular loop, uh, we want to check the contents, right? So now we want to do, okay, let's just copy this uh, block over here that we used previously. And then uh, let's say, okay, here. Okay, so that's the one, but now rather than S2, we're gonna say S3. And then S3, 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 S3. Yeah, just be careful when you do this, okay? Okay, so that's done. Oh, okay, so now the intermediate, uh, okay, that's good. Compile, and then we're gonna say run and then run workbench system. Okay, everything still works. Final bits I would like to do just for completeness. How about for the object comparison kind of stuff, right? Let's say we want to compare S2 and S3, okay? I'm gonna write it down and think about why, okay? So first of all, what about compare addresses between S1, S2, and S3? So S1 is definitely not equal to uh, S3. And also S2 is also not equal to S3, okay? That's for sure. And at the moment, even though we got Allen, Mark, and Tom for S3, but the object comparison is actually false. Agree? Okay. So now to really uh, to save some time, so I'll simply say S3 in order to make sure they are content equal. I'm gonna say S3 that compare objects. If you didn't do this, then if you compare, uh, if you did, if you say S1 tell that S3 and also S1 tell uh, S3 tell that S2, they are not gonna pass. Okay, uh, how about just for completeness? I'll simply say over here, S1 not content equal S3, and also S2 also not content equal to S3, because S3 dot object comparison is false. Okay, let's compile, and then let's make sure this is actually okay, right? So you can see over here, I'm actually using not equal to, okay? How can we make it equal? Well, we have to make sure they are consistent regarding how they check the membership. It should be either all compared by objects or all compared by references. So now I'll say S3 dot compare objects over here. And then let me just copy this very quickly. And then, so now they should be equal, but reference wise, they are still different, right? They are still different objects because it's now false. It's now true. It's being switched from false to true. Okay, compile, and then let's now run the workbench system. Okay, so, so everything works now. So in this video and the previous video, we show you all the basic, op basic operations and also the object comparison trick that you have to watch out for when you program these two data structures. And before I end the video, I would like to show you one more common feature for array and linked list, which I forgot. Okay, let me go back to Eiffel Studio. And let's go all the way back to the test array, test query over here, okay? You can see that's right from the beginning. And let's go a little bit, uh, let's just go towards the end of that particular query, okay? So that's the last thing we do, sorry. So go to the end. Okay, so now let's continue from there. But before that, we're gonna say check result end. So the one I wanna show you is uh, the fourth feature that we showed before extends the array by one position. But what if we don't want to extend the array size, we just want to modify, for example, index two. So how can we do that? So what we can do is we can say uh, over here, S2, let's say, uh, at position two should be assigned to Jim rather than uh, Mark, for example, right? Just keep it lowercase. And also equivalently, if I, I can also call a feature called put, I can say s2 dot put. So put is similar to force, except that put has to give a valid index. So I want to put, for example, Jeremy at position three. Okay, so you can see that, uh, sorry, three here, no brackets. So the index you supply for 
uh, put over here should be a valid index. So it should be either one or two or three in this case. It must be a valid index. Whereas for the fourth command over here, s 2com plus one is exactly one over the largest valid index, right? Notice the difference because for fourth is intended for extension. But for put, you just want to change the existing position. Okay, so after this, uh, let me do a very simple check for you. So now I can simply say result is, so S2, the count will still be three. We haven't grown the size of the array. And then, and also S2, position one will still be Allen. We haven't changed index one. And S2 at position two should be Jim. And also S2 at position three here should be uh, Jeremy. Okay, let's make sure this works for the array and then we'll do the same for the linked lists. Okay, so everything still works. So now let me go back to this. Let me just copy this one over here. And then let's go all the way to the end for the second test for the linked list. And then over here, we'll simply just paste over here. Okay, so now let's compile over here. Okay, so now uh, it doesn't really work because over here you can see it's about a put. So the put command for array cannot be used as the put command for linklet. It's simply not applicable. Okay, so why I simply just don't just don't use this one here for the linked list. So the put command is only for array, not for the linked list. But for both, but for both data structure, you can definitely use uh, simply just the indexing notation to do the update. That's fine. Okay, for both structures. So now that'll be Alan, and now we only change the Jim. But we haven't changed Jeremy, so that will still be Tom. Okay, just compile, and then you will say run workbench system. Okay, everything is still working. Okay, so now review the basic operation for linked list and arrays before we move on to the next video.